Hello, this is Kirsten Smith, Collections Curator at the Alberni Valley Museum. Today on Museum at Home, we're going to look at the canoes in the museum's collection. The museum has three canoes, and all of them are found here, just inside the entrance to the museum. The Alberni Valley Museum is a visible storage museum, which means that we aim to put all of our collections on display. Or rather, instead of storing objects in the back rooms where no one can see them, which is typical of most museums, we store our artifacts out in the museum galleries. Information about the objects on display can be found in catalogue books placed throughout the museum. We still keep some objects in backroom storage. Photographs are stored in the back room in acid-free boxes, and the two-dimensional art collection is stored in a series of map drawers. Photographs and works on paper are particularly susceptible to damage from light, which is one of the reasons they're not constantly on display. The other reason is we don't really have enough room to display them all. There are more than 450 artworks in the collection and over 21,000 photographic images. There are also some objects stored off-site at other locations around the city. For example, the two spot and the number seven are usually stored at the roundhouse. Other large museum artifacts like logging trucks or the Strathcona parlor car are stored at the Industrial Heritage Center alongside pieces that belong to the Industrial Heritage Society. The first canoe we're going to look at is a dugout canoe that was found by Albert Erg and one of his brothers. It was the late 1950s or early 1960s, during a time when the Somas River had heavy flooding and trees were being uprooted and swept downstream. The boys spotted the canoe in a backwater by some floating trees about 15 or so meters offshore. They went home and came back with their horses. After roping the canoe, they dragged it to shore. Then they balanced the canoe across the backs of their horses and walked them home. The brothers used the canoe for several years on the Somas River and on Sprout Lake before it was donated to the museum in 1973. Our next canoe once belonged to Captain Richard Porritt. Richard Porritt was son of a local photographer, Wright Porritt. He's seen here in one of his father's photographs. Richard was captain of the Uchuk and the Uchuk One in the 1930s and 40s, a mail and passenger service boat. The canoe and its two paddles were made in Port Alberni and acquired by Captain Porritt in the late 1920s or early 1930s. He used the canoe as a skiff to move between the shore and a trolling boat that he kept in the harbour, here in Port Alberni. It's a dugout canoe, like the one we first looked at, and it seems to be of First Nations origin, although its shape has more similarities with small European boats than those traditionally made by New Chanoff peoples. Which brings us to our third canoe. This is the largest and oldest canoe in our collection. It's also a dugout canoe. It's made of red cedar. If you look inside, there are ads marks visible on the interior of the canoe. The bottom of the hull is flat, and the sides flare out towards the gunwales. Gunwales are the rim around the edge of the boat. It also has three thwarts. These are the cross pieces in the boat. Since the canoe was donated to the museum, we have learned that it was made by Sam Campbell. Born in 1863, Sam was a well-known and well-regarded canoe maker from Nidanat. The canoe style is traditional among local New Channel peoples, and judging by its length, it was probably used for fishing. When the canoe was donated in 1969, it came with this story. The canoe was found by members of the Frank Sterling family in a creek near their Sprout Lake home in the 1890s. After leaving it for a year to see if the owners would claim it, the family eventually made use of it themselves, and used it for many years on the lake. Around 1930, they gave the canoe to their cousin, Ida Winter, who also lived at Sprout Lake. Ida used it for over 30 years until it was damaged by heavy snows in the winter of 1968 to 69. Ida then gave it to the Alberni District Museum and Historical Society. As there was no proper museum at that time, nor space to store the canoe, the Historical Society loaned the canoe to the city's Parks and Rec Commission, Parks and Rec had the canoe repaired by Walter Shaw, who was in Bamfield, so the canoe took a trip to Bamfield on the deck of the Lady Rose. Following the repairs, the canoe was returned to Port Alberni and eventually put on display at the Alberni Valley Museum, where you can still find it today. The canoe is typically on display in the museum's front gallery, though we did use it in one of our temporary exhibits in 2015. The canoe is actually too long to be carried through the museum. It won't fit around all the twists and turns. So it was carried out the front door and through the parking lot and then in through a side door into the temporary gallery. In addition to the full-size canoes, the museum also has several model canoes in the collection. 
All of these models have the distinctive shape of the traditional new channel canoe, the wolfhead prow, the vertical stern, and a flat bottom. It's interesting to note that many have a painted pattern to represent the wood joint that one would find on a full-size canoe. Though the main hull of a canoe is carved out of a single piece of wood, the stern and bow are made from separate pieces of wood that are attached to the hull. The models are small enough to be carved out of a single piece of wood, but you can see the representation of the wood joint. Here, for example, it is a green line, and in this example, it's a row of orange dots. If you're interested in making your own paper model of a new channel canoe, then check out the links on our Museum at Home webpage, or pick up a free craft package at the drive-through craft pickup at Echo Center.